Hello, my soccer universe. So close. So close. And yes, the first title of the season didn't go to Milan. I am still wearing Milan, but you know, uh, since we're in a title race with Inter, I did the most I can do, and my heart allows me to do it. During the season, I didn't have that much trouble wearing an Inter shirt, but now that it's really uh, all about rivalry and so on, I don't want to put on the jersey of a direct rival for, for a title. So, Inter, I salute you for winning the cup title by putting a shirt up there, but I cannot wear your shirt. Not at this moment. Not at this very moment. It might change at the beginning of next season again, but at the moment it's all about the title. So close. Really, Milan is so, so close. And yeah, it may still go wrong. I still think it is a highly successful season. However, at this point, if you don't bring home the Scudetto, yeah, it would feel a little bit odd, to be honest. Uh, I gotta, I gotta say it that way. Uh, it would leave a little bit of a sour taste. All that is needed is a single, 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 single point. That's all that is needed. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing and something that, honestly, I would not have imagined. Um, I think we have time to talk a lot about that, but uh, I was thinking, I mean, um, 84 points would be so, would suffice Milan for winning the title, 86 is the maximum they can achieve. And it seems kind of, yeah, it was kind of a weak overall Serie A season because, you know, you have, I think, four losses for Milan or something like that. We'll see that on the table afterwards, which, yeah, it doesn't look like a great season. But then on the other side, well, um, that might be true. Uh, however, the last time Milan won the title, I think they had 82 points. So Milan have already more points than under Allegri. Uh, and taking out most of the Juve season, I think it would have won them the title uh, a few times. So it's not all that bad. And it, and it makes the league very, 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 very exciting uh, to watch because we still have the final. Yes, there's only, I mean, uh, of all the combinations that are there, there's only one literally only one in which Inter win the title, which should make uh, me very, very um, positive. But on the other side, um, yeah, it is Sassolo away from home. Yes, it will be full with Milan fans there, which is always good to see. But Sassolo is a, 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 a team that is not very nice to play against, uh, but also a team that is almost on the beach, whereas Inter have to play at home, Sampdoria, a team that has nothing to play for anymore. Um, and so for that reason, it is not inconceivable. However, um, when we started the journey, when uh, Inter dropped the points against Bologna, it was clear 10 points out of um, four games. And so far they made nine. And that makes me very, very positive looking forward. And yeah, that's all uh, that, that there is to say. We also had, of course, a weekend of many farewells. We have to talk, we'll do this, it's about a brilliant, absolutely brilliant Coppa Italia final. Uh, it's, despite it being Juve, Inter, it, it was a gripping affair. Um, so yeah, uh, and you know, and as I said, a few greats uh, are leaving the Italian game. And we also have the little trouble of relegation <laughs> coming about, which is also, we, I mean, we know now two teams are down, but there are... Two more that are battling, and that's also interesting. So uh, let's go into the Coppa Italia final. As I said, an absolutely brilliant final. I mean, all that I wanted to out of this final, uh, at the bare minimum, I knew Inter is probably going to win it because they are just a better team, but at the bare minimum, I wanted that it goes to overtime, that Inter might be tired. Yeah, it didn't quite way, uh, play out, but, you know, the aftershocks might still come. So that, that I got. And that Inter had to work hard. That I got. Now that Inter won, despite the uh, the uh, in, despite the hard fight, that was maybe a little bit. I think if they would have lost this final, this could have uh, hit them a little bit uh, harder. But so be it. Uh, I don't want to take away from Inter because um, at a bare minimum they deserve this one title. Because uh, let let's face it. Uh, despite Milan, maybe um, by project building wise and uh, age of squad, and you know, there's a lot of good stuff to be happy about. Inter have the best squad in Serie A. 
And if you have the best squad in a league, you should at least win one title. So in that sense, I think I can live with the outcome. It started actually very early. Barella with a brilliant shot in the seventh minute uh, gave into the lead. And there was a time when I really thought, oh, Inter can just roll over Juve like Juve have done in their glory glory days so often. That it didn't happen was also a little bit uh, down to Juventus then actually finding their footing. Uh, and I think towards the end of the second half, uh, first half, uh, you actually got more into the game. Even having a few uh, calls for penalty, I think none of those that they had. Uh, yeah, I mean, as a fan, you th wanna see that them being given. Uh, but yeah, I, I, so and so. I mean, now the game is a little bit far away to be honest in, to, uh, to, 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 to to remember them at all. But I, I think you were hit uh, once the woodwork uh, in the first half, as far as I, I can remember. However, it all changed early in the second half when within three minutes Alexander Vlahovic turned the game on its head. And at that point, I really gotta, gotta say, Juve made the right adjustments and, uh, you know, Morata came on for Danilo. So, uh, uh, because at uh, first, Avla uh, Vlahovic was a little bit too much uh, isolated. And at that point, I really, really thought that uh, Juve had uh, dealt a mortal blow to Inter because uh, Inter was reeling at that point. Not that Juve were then going out for the third goal, but they then said, okay, let's play this home. But uh, what I could also see is that Juventus then had more and more trouble uh, containing Inter. And it was uh, funny enough, Juve who looked tired and not Inter. And Inter uh, had played definitely more games uh, than, uh, did they? I think they did, yeah. <laughs> yeah, about the same. But, uh, you know, Inter, I always, always feel that Inter had played more, but, but Inter and Juve all went out as the Champions League at the first <laughs> time of So they played the same amount of games, but it seemed that Juve were tired and Inter was not. And uh, the longer the second half went out, it seemed then almost like an inevitab inevitability uh, that the equalizer will come. And then it comes in form of a penalty. And yeah, uh, that one, I can understand Juve fans. Yes, if you look at it, if you look at the replay, yes, it's a penalty. But I can totally see why you cannot, why you're not happy with that one. I can totally see it. I also gotta see it. some of the um, uh, changes from Allegri seemed a little bit off uh, in, in ways. So I, 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 I was not. It, it, it was not a very inspired performance from the sideline. The penalty was pulled away by Cialanoglu very emphatically, and it's two-two. And then in overtime. Um, it was for me really more a uh, Juve now, uh, Juve tried to hold out for the penalty shootout and uh, nerves were high and then also they make their own within a three minute uh, turnaround. The first another penalty given, uh, Perisic and probably the even better goal Perisic who showed his two-footedness taking the ball down with one foot and shooting it with the other. Uh, 100 seconds minute and uh, it is 4-2 and there was no coming back for you with from that one so yeah uh, it was uh, from the cup finals that I've seen it was a pretty entertaining and wild affair and uh, really really fun really really fun uh, if you take the Milan mind out of it now uh, as for the weekend to be honest I did not see all that much because I was focusing first on the German Bundesliga then uh, FA Cup final then the Premier League and so on and um, yeah to me it didn't uh, especially at the Empoli Salentana game although it was a pretty huge game uh, it was right where uh, I was watching uh, more for German stuff uh, it's the point for Salentana, which came uh, as the equal in 76 uh, to, um, at, uh, through Bonazzoli after uh, Cotrone gave Empoli the lead, um, was carried. It kept the door open. It actually allowed, in a way, I mean, um, if at that point it was Cagliari mainly, uh, but also Genoa still in the running, um, if they would pick up wins to really um, put pressure again on Salernitana. However, if, for instance, Cagliari would lose, uh, the distance would still be surmountable for them, although not in a positive way. Uh, a crazy game from what I hear was Roma against Venezia, 1-1. Um, Venezia scored with the only shot on goal. I think uh, Roma hit four times the woodwork. Uh, an absolute onslaught and they only get one point. And at this point, they put themselves in jeopardy for the U uh, European, uh, European spot via the league. Yes, if they win the conference league, they play in the Europa League next season. 
However, uh, you were in this three-way tie. Uh, it was not a guaranteed thing that you would finish in Europe at this point. However, the other results then uh, very much fell um, Roma's uh, way. Um, Sassuolo beating uh, Bologna in the kind of derby, 3-1. Uh, uh, Napoli then, uh, last game of his last home game of uh, Lorenzo Insigne. Uh, they win it 3-0. He got a trophy that was as big as him, which I found funny. Um, and yeah, he also was allowed to retake a penalty because, of course, why not? It's Italy after all. Uh, for me, it was always about Milan Atalanta. All about Milan Atalanta. I mean, the whole day was building up to the six o'clock kickoff. Um, and yeah, um, the first of all, how brilliant looks the San Siro full. I said it before, but uh, that really uh, brilliant. I mean, yes, I like it, especially with Milan fans. So in the red, it, it, it just looks brilliant with all the, and, and the excitement. I mean, did, did you see Zlatan banging on the bus window and cracking the bus window? Because he was animating the, the Milan fans waiting there. The excitement around Milan is beyond anything uh, that I can remember. Yes, there was always some excitement uh, there. I mean, it, it definitely got lost during the dark uh, ages. But I maybe I follow into too little, but uh, the excitement around Milan, I think they, they, they could have sold out the San Siro twice over. It was that crazy. And at first, I think the first five minutes were even entertaining. You saw that Atalanta, yeah, we are coming here to play as well. And Milan also. I think in the first five minutes, you could see that they was going up and down. And then there was kind of a, a short stoppage and then you could see the weight the weight of the occasion. Uh, both teams also very much neutralizing themselves. Um, Milan choosing a rather odd uh, starting lineup, I gotta say. Not uh, by the lineup itself, but the way it was kind of um, made. I think Tonali had uh, uh, had a, a little bit, uh, no, was not uh, had to pay to play the long balls mostly. He was not really in the builder play there and kind of uh, pulled his man out of. Uh, out of position, but once Atalanta had uh, re had re re reset, Atalanta actually had a little bit more control over the, over the, mid mid the midfield, and Milan needed to adjust again, which they actually did uh, to their normal system. But it was really, really uh, there was a total stalemate moment in there. It was not a good game at that point. You could feel there was, and uh, I would even argue that Atalanta was a teeny bit more. Um, Dangerous, although there was this one attack, I think in the second minute over Salamakers, who was the only one who seemed to give a little bit of spark to the Milan attack, um, was going. However, once the changes are made, I think uh, in the last five to ten minutes, Milan then got the upper hand. And they didn't score, but they started to create chances. And you could see that there were some uh, where uh, Leao could, could get in a one-on-one -on -one and, you know, get away from his op opponent and again not getting the pass off correctly, you know. Uh, but uh, the, the points were then there that maybe there's something happening. And then it did happen. Um, the, uh, the first spark came then. You took Salamakers and Giroud off. Messias, who is... Sa 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 Salamakers played well. I mean, he's not great. But I think he provided enough spark, and for once he even got a shot on goal. Uh, of course, it was too centralized. And Giroud was always a little bit hanging much in the air, so he needed a little bit more than mobile attacker with Ante Rebic. Uh, but then it all played off. I mean, um, pay, pay, paid off. I mean, Messias uh, with a, a ball, a uh, through ball to Leao. There was potentially a foul in the build-up, but uh, if, if you see it, I mean, yes, there was a grab, but it was not a grab like this. It was more like holding... Uh, with 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 him, but then Leo stays strong. Uh, has the defense? Yes, uh, Cope Miners uh, doesn't want to follow him because he was already in a yellow card just a few minutes ago, and he stays strong and puts the ball into the net. Yeah. Uh, abs and from that moment on, I knew if the defense keeps on playing as they do, we'll be alright. Milan will be alright. Um, and that was a minute after Zapata had come on and Malinowski too, uh, too that I was actually a little bit worried about. But that actually then really tilted everything in Milan's favor. Now, um, the ball recovery midfield was a big uh, thing, especially through Frank Kessier. Not this time Tonali. Tonali did not have uh, the greatest of games. He even came over in the 63rd for uh, Ben Asser. Um, and then the game, uh, it's not that there were many, many, many chances, but then the game was uh, decided uh, through uh, a massive Teo Ananda solo, coast to coast. 
Krunic wins the ball. Uh, he gives it to Hernandez, who from his own box runs in an S curve towards midfield on the right side and uh, circles back and pulls it in, in, in the internet. And I think by the time where, they, where Atalanta realized, yeah, maybe we wish we should follow him, it was too late. Uh, either you could not follow him or you couldn't do any, any anything. I think Pessina in particular uh, really could, could have done something. Yes, it, it reminded me a lot of the George Vea goal against Verona uh, in the 95-96 season. Uh, who also went coast to coast, but I think he had more players in, in between. But this to me is the goal of the Serie A season. The way he just takes off, and uh, the funny thing is that I even thought that at first, he's not even that fast, he's, he, he, he's running, but suddenly he, he, the turbo boost comes on and boom, and he's gone. And then after all the others run, having that composure to put the ball away like that, wonderful. Uh, there was also the one scene where at one time Zapata found the Milan defense a little bit unsorted by Mignon and uh, Tomori got that out, uh, done easily. And uh, the last thing I, I, I want to say, huge, absolutely huge praise for Tomori and Kalulu. Not only, I mean Tomori wa was kind of a starter and uh, by the way, have, have, have since seen since, since, since he is with the long hair now and the big beard. I really wish he comes back to play because that look is just awesome. Um, but the big uh, thing is, they were on the yes, both of them were on yellow cards for like now just two or three games in a row. They make it to the final game. They defend it expertly. So with all the calm and uh, the calm that you want in a defender, it, uh, it, it is this is the stuff that I saw the legendary defenses of Milan long time ago. Bravo. Absolutely, absolutely bravo. And also that Bakayoko came off for Krunic. I never thought that I'll see Bakayoko in the Milan jersey again, and I was actually quite nervous. But Milan sees it out 2-0, and yeah. This was the uh, this was kind of saying to uh, Inter, now you gotta do it if you wanna stay in this title in, in this title race. And now it was also clear. Although I said it all, all, all along, I take a point against Atalanta, because that was for me the, the most uh, difficult cold game. That you can take now the point uh, in the last game, I think is a huge bonus because now it really tilts very much into Milan's favor. Um, and you would think that uh, with that support and the calm that this young team now has, and there was no Ibrahimovic playing. The best thing that Ibrahimovic did is, is celebrate with Giroud, which was another one of my favorite scenes there. And you know, uh, celebrations around the San Siro, but you could feel, yes, we're all happy that we got that win. And it's great to have you all guys here. It's not done yet. This is the feeling that I got and it's not done yet. And it's not done yet because Inter do their job. They almost threw it away at one time. Again, I mean, they had a tool to they had many, many chances. I think Lautaro even hit the, um, the, uh, the post. In the first half, Darmian gives them the lead. Then when Lautaro makes it 2-0 in the 51st on, on a breakaway, you really thought, yeah, okay, Inter stay in the tight title race. But then Luko Janis takes a uh, long-range shot. It's 1-2, and then Inter were suddenly nervy. Not that Calder had that many chances, but it, you, you could see it's just a rogue ball. Nies, Nies, it's 2-2 and Milan are champions. However, uh, Inter then settled it uh, in the 84th again. Lautaro in the 84th makes it 3-1. Inter stay in the title race. Um, Sampdoria, who at that point were already um, were already um, uh, secured uh, due to the results before, uh, beat Fiorentina 4-1, which again is a result that falls Roma's way. Atalanta lost, Fiorentina lost, Roma got one point. So yeah, and then uh, the farewell for uh, um, Chiellini and Dybala ends in a 2-2. You were being rather dom dominant in the first half, um, and then Lazio come back and snatch a draw. And a draw that's uh, rather big for them too. Uh, so, you know, I have not seen much, much of these. Um, let's look at the table. I was a little bit flabbergasted because it's still 56 44 for uh, Milan. I think it should be a little bit more tilted towards uh, Milan in that sense. But, you know, uh, the model spits out because Inter is a much, has not only um, a much higher rating than Milan still, but also have a home game, which is a much bigger advantage. So maybe uh, that plays into it. Goal, Milan would not win it by goal difference, but Milan 
the head to head is the first uh, the first tiebreaker. So. <laughs> Um, as we see now, uh, for uh, the second spot, Fiorentina hold the head-to-head -head over Atalanta. Uh, Roma is one point ahead of them, but this is not a done deal yet. Uh, Roma could potentially catch Lazio. However, on the other side, Fiorentina uh, and Atalanta still could overtake Roma. We'll see about the last fixtures there as well. And on the bottom, yes, Salentana could separate themselves a little bit of, from Cagliari. Put themselves in a, a better spot. It's um, Genoa, uh, Venezia are down, and Cagliari and Salernitana. It's between those two now. Uh, and if we see now the final, uh, let, let's go for uh, the last thing that will be decided is, of course, uh, the relegation where Salernitana have a home game against Udine and Cagliari have to play against Venezia. With a home game, you would kind of think that Salernitana will do it. Uh, for the European spots, Roma actually take an early kickoff, probably in preparation for the Conference League final against Torino. That is a win. They absolutely need to win. If they don't win, they open the door for Atalanta and Fiorentina. Now, Atalanta have an easier game than Fiorentina, and it might as well be that Fiorentina miss out. After a really good season, miss out on Europe, which I personally would find a little bit sorry, but on the, on the other side, uh, maybe Atalanta is still the slightly better team. And then it's all Sunday, 6 o'clock. Inter Sampdoria, Sassuolo, Milan for the title. It's not the last thing that's decided, which I actually find all right, because, you know, you can have the title sales and celebrations and then you go late on for relegation where, you know, there need, doesn't need to be that many big ceremonies as well. But yeah, uh, it's going to be, it's going to be exciting. I am still, I would assume that the zone will probably show both uh, games switching back and forth. But I'm wondering if I shouldn't just watch Milan. Because after all, it all depends on them. The Inter result only comes into play if Milan should go down. Uh, on a side note, um, I really would like to get the jersey. If Milan clinched the title, I would like to get the title clinching jersey. And in that sense, since I like the away jersey a whole lot better than the current home home jersey, um, maybe it's good that they play, have to play in Sassuolo. But let's see. Let's see. Who do you think will win the title? Uh, who do you will think will go down? And how about all the other the relegation? And, and so on. in any case, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. One point. I need one point. I was waking up this night just thinking, couldn't just Milan pass the ball around, 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 around. They're just, just 90 minutes uh, passing the ball around and securing the title this way. Fortunately, Sassuolo will not uh, agree to that. The former Sassuolo owner, though, would have. <laughs> he was a huge Milan fan, but you know, not the current regime. Any case, uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more, and I will uh, talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye.